Aloha and welcome to the one within all. Interverse tribe, I'm sure we can all relate to that childhood feeling of wanting to grow up and be a superhero. Throughout those formative years, we dream bigger than most older folks do, and without the fear of failure that typically plagues the mindset of so-called mature adults. As we age, life often asks us to put these aspirations aside and alienate ourselves from our true desires and replace them with a Western work ethic and rigid routine. Our guest today is the one and only Greg Sipes, a truly multidimensional superhuman with an impressively diverse creative history, who seems to have never lost sight of that wildly imaginative child we once all were. Best known for his voice work and acting roles, Greg is as close to a real life superhero as most people ever get, providing his one of a kind vocal talents for beloved characters like Michelangelo of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Beast Boy from Teen Titans, just to name a few. In addition to acting roles in many big movies and television shows, Greg has also got a history in professional surfing and has manifested magical music as a singer and guitarist in multiple bands. From a very young age, Greg Sipes has been following his passions and bringing a lot of fun to everything he does. Especially impressive is the fact that instead of simply stepping into a character's shoes and reading some lines, Greg brings his entire self to his roles and characters he plays inevitably become known for their chilled out serenity, creative flair, love for animals, and respect for the unity of all life. They say the entire world would change in a generation if we taught children to meditate, and for that reason, we're all indebted to Greg for the influential part he's playing in the culture we create for the youth. So strap in and get ready for some high energy inspiration, take a moment and breathe, and from that still center point of your personal mandala, please conjure up some loving appreciation and send it through the ether to the powerful heart chakra of our guest, a true son of the sun, and the most ambitious beach bum under it, Greg Sipes. Welcome to Interverse, dude. Booyah kasha. Did, <laughs> did I say it right? Yeah, booyah kasha. Peace, love, and animals. And it's a pleasure to be here with you all. And um, it's an auspicious moment in time to be uh, alive here on the planet. And the fact that we can kind of talk through technology is, is a real blessing and see each other. We're videoing this, right, too? Yeah, yeah, we're getting video of this one, which is cool. I don't always get to do that. And you're sporting the new hairdo as well. So this is the real Greg Sipes, not an imposter, people. Yes, the real beast boy in the house. Yo, what up, everybody? <laughs> and I'm in beautiful Venice Beach, California with my son, Wingman, the guru of the gurus. Dogs are the highest form of life on the planet. And uh, really... I get to have a lot of fun, you know, being a successful actor, producer, musician in, in LA, but the highlight of my life is really Wingman G and <laughs> in the ocean and Mother Earth. And the, the longer I'm on this planet, the more I start to realize what's really most important is our connection with Mother Earth and her animals and the ones we love and getting out of our uh, getting out of our own way. And that just takes kind of letting go of all the crap we've been programmed with that keeps us away from the simple joys of life, like just being with our dogs all day long and all night long or mother earth or sitting by a tree or by the ocean. It's like the phone I'm finding is a pretty um, great tool, but it's also very taxing and I'm feeling it more and more and more. And I'm feeling more and more and more like I'm ready to get rid of the phone. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of people are feeling that, but it is a great tool that connects me with everybody. Right now I'm on the computer talking to you, which I think is the route to go. It feels better being on a computer than on the phone. So I'm, I'm going to change my life. And again, you can too. I'm definitely in a position to do it. I'm going to change my life. Um, I've worked really hard to get to this spot where I can get basically a scenario together where I don't have to be on the phone. Because I feel like the phone is really a, an e, like a pretty destructive thing to our electromagnetic field, for our health, for our psyche. It really distracts us from the now. It creates short breath. And really, the breath is so critical um, to have uh, be connected to you know, your consciousness. It's like your, your breath for me is the breath is the way to reach super consciousness. Become your breath. I'm really into air in water, clean air, clean water. I'm a, I'm an airaholic and a wateraholic. That's why I live on the water and I don't like to leave. I don't like to leave the beach, man. Where are you at? I'm pretty far from the beach. Unfortunately, I'm here in Southwest Missouri. So 
we do have plenty of beautiful nature to be appreciative of. Actually, I grow to love this area more the longer I'm here, although I have no doubt I'll find myself migrating sooner than later just to see more of the world and to get some life on the beach time like you're describing. But, you know, one thing I like about around here is that the greenness has sort of an infinity of different shades. When I was sort of more in the matrix, you could say, and really distracted by things like the phone and by culture, found myself, you know, ignoring nature. I thought of green as all one thing. I thought of all the the different plants and shades and, um, you know, expressions of nature just in this area as kind of like monotone, monotonous, boring. And then starting to wake up to the connection that we all have to it, I guess getting more connected to my own personal internal energy is what developed my ability to appreciate the outside world. But, you know, then that's let me really appreciate wherever I'm at, not just around here. And I think it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. All the things that you just started out with, uh, even some stuff I didn't even think of going towards like the phone. I mean, right there, boom, that is the thing that we ignore the biggest. The phone is really running everyone's life. Hi, hippie family. (laughs) I'm in the middle of a meeting. They found a dog. Let's check it out. They found a dog. Hold on one sec. Yeah, that's cool, man. So I live in a community, a real community. I live in Venice Beach where most of my friends are homeless people. So I have a different life experience than most Americans where I don't... I'm not hidden from the realities of what's going on. I live with the people and half of my friends are homeless and we all take care of each other and we look out for each other. And we take care of our block and we, I do everything I can for, you know, everybody without depleting my own self, which you have to take care of yourself first, but you really learn um, what humanity is supposed to be like by living in a community that actually communicates and holds e- each other um, accountable and, you know, uh, you get checked if you're not being respectful. And on the boardwalk, there's 1 million people that walk on the boardwalk every weekend. So every kind of person is here every day long, all day long. And you really learn about yourself by, you know, connecting with other people. And again, if you're on your phone, you're pretty much not doing that. So I like being with the people. The greatest joy comes from being with the people, you know? Yeah, I think we have the power to sort of manifest the right person in the right time without the need for all that technology. And with, you know, the way we use the phone has positive aspects, sure. But what if we were just letting life lead us together instead of trying to coordinate using this whole system of time and everything has to be exact? And, you know, it was great for us right now because we met at six, you know, on the computer through technology. And I think we're going to we're already manifesting some really great material here because some things that I personally ignore, even though I know are bad, are the fact that there's homeless people in my community that I have not little connection with at all. And there's my phone that I'm on an ungodly amount, I'm sure, even for the pursuit of some positive things, but definitely for a lot of really distracting things. And yeah, two of my biggest personal ignorances you've brought up right here. And I, I, uh, I appreciate that because it's already giving me a lot of material to reflect about. So where were you? Let's continue. <laughs> well, those were that was a, a, a homeless family, and they have a baby named Zenith. It sounds like I just learned his name, but I've been seeing him for a week, and I, I'm always like, "Look at the baby!" And it's I, I love I love people of the earth. I love hippies. I love real hippies. I love people that love earth and and love healing and uh, you know are into nature and um, unplugging from the matrix, if you will. That's where I'm at. I'm going towards that in my life more so than anything because I just get more joy from unplugging and being uh, living this a simpler life. The the more the busier I get because I'm producing and creating television shows and movies now. The more I'm being required to be on the phone, and the more I'm starting to set my life up to not be on the phone. (laughs) The more I'm being required to be on it, the more I'm starting to plan my uh, exit from it well what you do whenever you you know create a new path like that for yourself you're also showing other people a different path because uh well most people do unfortunately find themselves influenced by others more than they make their own self the influence as you're doing but 
whenever you are making your true self and your inner feelings constantly known to yourself, that actually helps everyone else feel theirs as well. And I think that's why so much love just comes through all the stuff you do, even when it's on an entertainment focus or intended basis, you can bring your own intention to it and it's going to make an impact on what ends up manifesting. I think it's it's pretty interesting that through entertainment, we can sort of sneak in concepts and information like your catchphrase that you made up for the Mutant Ninja Turtle, Michelangelo, uh, Booyakasha. Booyakasha, they had me come up with the new catchphrase for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles television show on Nickelodeon that uh, I play Michelangelo on. And they said, yo, come up with a new catchphrase. We don't want Calbunga. We want something new. And me and my friend Sirenelli basically came up with Buyakasha, which means all glories to the most high. It comes from Ireland and then the Irish settlers in Jamaica gave it to them. But Buyakasha means all glories to the most high. So I wanted the turtles to basically give praise to Ja every time they're going to a battle. So when they're like, Buyakasha, it's just bringing in the most high energy. And so I got kids all around the whole world saying, saying Buyakasha. And they don't necessarily know what it means, but words are like spells. So every time you say Buyakasha, it's a really positive vibrational frequency that's being drawn into anybody who says it. And it's really a, a great gift we have uh, words. And if we use them correctly, we can, uh, you know, it all starts with the word in many ways. Like, I mean, I'm sure you've witnessed when you've said some stupid things in your life and it's created hell for you. And if you say the right thing, you could, you could bypass the, the turmoil of saying the wrong thing. Um, you can also uh, create the most beautiful experiences in your life by, um, you know, also affirming what you want, casting a vision with your words, you know, thought into matter and word confirms it. And it takes association to, uh, to really live that that kind of lifestyle, I find the more I'm around conscious conscious people or people that are wanting to be more conscious. People are again. That's why I like hippies. I like real hippies who are into Mother Earth and healing and crystals and tarot and, and people that are wanting to basically tap into the unseen. I find the more I'm around people like that, souls like that, the more I remember who I am, and then. That's my, really where my true power comes from and the true joy of, of living on this planet comes from is being in tune with Mother Earth. And um, it's, a, it's a really sad time, but also a very joyous time. It, it's like a yin-yang. It's always going to be like that. The dark with the light, it's eternally the, that ride. So don't think it's not going to be that. It's always going to be that. So we have to be in touch with our dark energy as, long, as, as, as much as we're in tar touch with our light energy and I like being right in the middle I'm a surfer so I'm always on the edge I'm, I, I'm looking for that edge and and the, the, the more I don't try to uh, do anything the more I live on the edge the more I don't make finite decisions about anything whether it's with my love relationship or work or whatever it may be the, the happier I am but I'm coming from a, a place in my life where in the past, we all have been trained to um, make decisions because our family made decisions and we kind of get programmed to make decisions like our family. Whether it's like, are you a Christian? The only reason why you're a Christian is because your family was a Christian. If you were born in India to a Buddhist family, you'd be born in a Buddhist family. So you have all these things that are kind of pressed upon you, decisions about how love relationships work, your religious decisions, all this stuff is put on you. So the more you could kind of get rid of all that stuff, clean your slate, which takes work, the more you can kind of be a decisionless kind of person and, and don't make finite decisions and just stay open, but, but at the same time knowing what you want and then everything you've ever wanted, you receive it and you'll get it in a way you never could have imagined, better than you could have imagined every time. And that's a real um, thing that happens always in my life. And I know it can happen for everybody, but it is a, a constant mantra and it's a natural mantra just like it's natural to breathe so i've always heard that in my like a voice saying you have everything and you'll get it in a way you never could have imagined better than you could have imagined every time if you just do it know what you want and i always know what i want i don't know i think people are 
fooling themselves and they're not being honest when they say they don't know what they want. They're scared to confess they do actually know what they want. And we've also been programmed to not um, accept the fact that we are desire we are desireful beings, and it's not a bad thing to be desireful. But we've also been taught by religions for thousands of years that desire is bad. No, it's good to know what you want. It's good to want things, and it's good to give yourself things, everything you've ever wanted, because only then can you really learn where to be in the spectrum of reality from the high and the low. And I really choose to give myself everything I've ever wanted, and only more of that comes to me. But sometimes you make the wrong decision and that comes to you and then that's the only way you learn to not make that decision again. At the same time, the more I uh, learn, the more I realize I don't know anything. And again, it brings me back to like just being open and not making finite decisions. Like I'm in a relationship right now with a girl who I really love and it's been hard four years of trying to live a, a kind of, traditional monogamous relationship which is not very natural for me most of the time sometimes it is but sometimes it's not so what do you do when your whole being is like going against what you've told yourself that it has to be it's it causes it causes stress and tension and but growth and you have to be um not scared to just kind of do you and and there's going to be pain in life and there's going to be uh um things that are, are not comfortable, but you have to go into them and realize that you really uh, are not in any um, real jeopardy of losing anything because nothing real can be threatened and nothing unreal exists. So while we're here, we got to live our lives and be warriors. And I feel like I'm very much at the beginning stage of my warriorship here on earth. As much as I feel like I've definitely affected people and people have affected me, I'm infinitely inspired to make a bigger difference on this planet than I ever have been. And it's through the entertainment business because what people hear and see is how their minds work, which therefore creates our reality. So it's really up to you as an artist and we're all artists to really share our art and change reality and create our own reality first more so than anything. Cause if we can't do it at home, we can't do it anywhere. And if you can't do it in your own body, you can't even do it in your house. So it's, it really just starts. It's so like, it, go, it really comes back to you. It comes back to your body. You can't, everybody's like, oh, I want to change the world. I want to help the government or whatever. You can't even do that if you, if you don't know how to love yourself fully. And it's hard, but it's also worth it because nothing else really matters as much as you learning how to love yourself because then all the altruism we're seeking in life will come to you. We're also taught being selfish is not right because being selfish is actually what you need to do. You need to be selfish. And that means you'll be overflowing because you filled yourself up. You actually be overflowing with the love and abundance and, and all these things. And that's been a hard journey for me too, being um, a selfish person. And it's important to be selfish. But the more I'm selfish, the more I have to give. Yeah, man, there's so much there to uh, <laughs> un unpack. But, you know, a lot of the things you're saying are things that I think anyone that starts looking within is going to feel those feelings and you've done a great job putting that into words. It's something that I think we can never put into words too many times or in too many ways that real change comes from within. And, you know, first maybe it, you have to s slow down enough and still, still yourself enough and quiet your thoughts enough to start actually feeling your feelings, you know, here feeling your heart instead of, hearing your mind in a sense. And then, it, you know, it goes to the next, the next layer of the onion is just your own home. Uh, you have to be able to be, you, can, you have to be able to trust yourself with your own time and your own, you know, your own attention to spend those things on, on good things. And I think that part of the positive aspect of the, you know, really materialistic workaholic oriented world that we've got is it does help people find a work ethic, but then you can get lost in just trying to produce and not actually trying to express. And so what happens to us is we get so bogged down with the, you know, with the, the stress from all that work that we don't even take care of our own bodies or our own houses. And, you know, we want to just kill time in our free time instead of 
doing something that's going to move us away from the fact that we're trapped in a rat race. But if you can't even clean, if you can't even clean your own room, you're not ready to go save the world. But the thing is, even when you're out saving the world, you still have to clean your room when you get home. Like all of that, all of those little steps, all those inner parts of the onion, and as you go out and be more and more active and influential in your outer world and the people in your life, you still have to maintain all of those things that are foundational. I think the chakra system is a, is a good way of understanding that actually, because it starts at that, that root and that physical health and goes out to higher consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm healing my own root chakra right now, bringing me back to the love relationship. It's like, I'm really exploring uh, you know, freedom as the most precious thing you could ever give yourself. And that's hard when you have a love relationship. It's hard for me to say it because it's uncomfortable because you potentially are going to maybe lose somebody you're not supposed to be with anyway. But again, if, if you can be fearless and realize nothing real can be threatened and nothing unreal exists, then that person that you're, you're, you're in love with isn't going to go anywhere if it's real love. And you're going to be together. So you have nothing to worry about. But we're so, we've been so programmed to like uh, be so attached and controlling and put our partners into boxes. And, and we are um, infinite love, right? So how could infinite love have not enough love to love more than one person? Now, I'm not saying that there's something wrong with monogamy inherently because there's not either. You're totally free to make your own expression your own so some of us might want to even oscillate between those modes as you said but but yeah you, <laughs> i totally understand that dichotomy and that that mental schism as someone that's in a i've actually recently gotten married but like freedom is still the thing i pursue most fully in every aspect of my life and and so i don't try i, I don't lie to myself about what i want i, I mean my partner we don't allow attachment to keep us from doing what we want to do anyway. I mean, an example would be she wanted me to go with her family on a trip to Arizona this week. And I said, well, I want to do that. It sounds fun. But I also want to be around here for certain things like like this awesome interview, for example. And it's fine. You know, we have the we have that freedom. Maybe we don't even get to speak very much like we don't put a pressure on the other one to like, you need to answer my texts or my calls. But all of, like that's one of the ways the phone is most evil is it allows that sort of energy sucking parasite that all of us potentially could be to like really get a grip on somebody and like they're a slave to the screen that has your picture on it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going away from all that shit. I'm getting into a, a new zone in my life that is, um, I guess, counterculture to, um, what culture is right now which is pretty lost and i want to be found in the way i can i find myself is by shutting it all down i take shabbat every uh friday night to saturday night which is uh, a jewish tradition where you're to turn off all electronics and not get in your car and just basically be you know read meditate pray just you know shut all electronics off and it's I don't know if you turn your phone off, but it's hard. It's actually hard to turn your phone off and just be. You're, uh, and, and the more you're away from it, the easier it gets. It's a real addictive thing like cigarettes or something, maybe even stronger. Oh, way stronger. I mean, for sure way stronger. Yeah, and I think that's something to, be, to recognize. And all of the things I'm creating right now, and I'm creating many different TV shows and things that – uh, all have within it these seeds of of exploration that I'm I'm trying to navigate myself, uh, like like getting rid of phones or monogamy and polygamy and and all of these things that I really feel like need to be worked out for for humanity to be able to heal. We're we're very sick because we've been taught the wrong way to live. We don't live in freedom. We don't live in celebration and we definitely don't live in respect. There's all of these things are missing from our culture and cultures around the whole world. Some have more of one or the other of these those aspects, but for the most part, cultures all around the whole world are getting pretty much the same. Like it's pretty it's pretty ugly. Everywhere you go, it's all pretty ugly. You You're know? gonna see McDonald's everywhere. Like that's pretty ugly. It's there's and we need to um 
stop making earth ugly, but it really does start with your body, what's going on inside of your stomach, because it's all going on out, uh, out, what's going on outside is what's going on inside of us. So it really starts with what you're putting in your mouth, really. It's, it comes back to, you know, being holy, which means controlling what comes in the nine holes of your body. And most importantly, what comes in your, what goes in your mouth. The most de important decision you can make every day of your life is what you put in your mouth. And holy also is like holy, like you're holy yourself. You're, you're not internally divided, which is also another way of saying you're an individual. You're individual. And that's also scary because we're also told to like compromise our lives for everybody. Give your life to, you know, um, even in marriage and uh, relationships, you're to like compromise, compromise. You're supposed to become one with somebody else. And that only could truly happen in a harmonious way of that other person is a complete whole person as well. We are two complete whole persons coexisting together. So it's more like best friends, not lovers. Lovers are, it's a pretty um, <laughs> chaotic experience. Uh, I think it's more important to find somebody that's your best friend and loves the same things as you and is into the same things as you. Then it would be much easier for you to kind of, live life in a harmonious way and actually even take care of yourself. But if you're like battling to just even have the basics of your life be supported, like eating healthy and, you know, uh, you know, meditation and all these things should be a part of your daily experience. If the other person's not doing that in your life, then you should really look at maybe having some space from that person. So you can do that for yourself. And then you'll either that person will learn or you'll attract the new soul in your life that will be more of an inspiration to you on the path that you're on. I totally see what you mean there. I think specifically what's important is that anyone that you're going to merge your aura with by sharing a space like that, whether even if it's just a roommate and not even a romantic relationship, I think it is important that you are surrounding yourself with people. Either you're surrounding yourself with people that are going to support your desire to find the truth by the fact that they're also seeking the truth, or you need to be so strongly rooted in your truth at that point that there's no way that it's going to impact your own ability to maintain that self-knowing to be around them. In which case you're like some kind of master who's basically a guru to these other people, which I don't know, I've never met one. <laughs> but we do have to, you know, it's, it's like, we do have to be able to be in the midst of even the most heavy and dense vibratory field of, you know, collective heavy consciousness in the middle of the most populated dense city and still shine our own personal light and not be assimilated by that. So, you know, we have to build up to that maybe, but it is something that we inevitably to, to heal and change the world. We got to go right into the heart of it, which is something you do. I mean, with your work specifically. I definitely strive towards solutions what are the solutions in exploring solutions on, uh, on every front, whether it's personal relationships or you know, um, yeah, our health or our global health. But uh, I mean, just in my home, like how do, I, how do I make my home as healthy as possible so therefore I can be fed by my home and then overflow into the rest of my experience in the outside of my home. But it's like, it's almost, it's a, like a full-time job just to get your, your home health, super, super healthy. And it takes a community to pull stuff off. Like me working on like 20 different projects in the entertainment business and trying to keep my house in order and not just in order, but like next level Zen <laughs> is, is I have a team of people who help me, but you have to actually let people help you. You can't do it all yourself. I can't. Yeah, that, that's something I'm starting to learn. Actually, the experience of how we got connected for this interview. Yeah, your me. brother, right? Um, he's like a soul brother, but <laughs> yeah, my, my good homie, Chris, he, uh, you ended up getting it in touch with him and you guys are working on some kind of cool yeah, video yeah, he's project. Yeah, you to make some psychedelic edits to uh, a music video and maybe a couple music videos from my new album coming out, new Sipes and the People album. 
and he's doing a good job. I'm excited to release the stuff that we're working on together. Yeah. Like I've kind of, I'm kind of in like a hermit cycle in my life right now because of the fact that I'm stuck in a, the rat race to support my needs for my home, my personal needs. And like, you know, it's expensive to eat organic for example, but then, uh, you know, it's, to build this podcast platform, I've got to dedicate all my free time to it that I can possibly spare and spend. Whenever I was communicating with your awesome assistant, Jordan, about getting this interview set up, I thought, well, Chris actually found Greg for me in a sense, like he has really good taste in people that he is into and follows. Here's somebody that can both help me find new people to talk to consistently and who can help me with the scheduling thing and juggling all that because I have trouble with keeping <laughs> checking my email consistently because I don't really want to be on the phone. And, you know, not to push it aside on someone else, but he does have more free time and I can compensate him. So it's like a win-win and you let someone help you and they'll, they'll be there for you as long as you are paying attention and can just be like, Hey, can you help? <laughs> yeah. And energy exchange is critical. And again, the more you give, the more you're going to get. I've taught, I've, I've learned from some masters in my life. Most of them are, have moved on a long time ago and most of them are from India. But really one of the greatest things I've ever learned from Osho is one of my teachers in life. And Osho is uh, the most controversial maybe soul that's ever been on planet earth. and. Some people are really deathly afraid of him and hated him to the point where they killed him. They poisoned him. But what he did while he was here was left a, a tremendous amount of, he dedicated his life to giving and speaking about waking the fuck up. And he did it like nobody else. Really what I got from him more so than anything is there's no lack in the universe. There's infinite amounts of everything you've ever wanted. So give yourself everything you've ever wanted. Only more of that will come to you. So don't be afraid to, spend money on assistance because the more you're going to, you're going to be able to do more. You're going to be able to make more money. You're going to man mama fest more, you know, in your life. Well, yeah, there's that inner outer reflection in the unity of every being that means that if you are actually giving energy in the form of currency to somebody and they're doing something in return for you, what that's doing is drawing in more of the concept of, being compensated fairly for something to your own life. If you're doing that for another person, you're drawing more of that in for yourself and therefore creating more opportunities for yourself potentially. I think it's really cool you brought up Osho because I actually, uh, Chris had told me that you did some tarot stuff on on the phone <laughs> and for people and in, in stories. And, and for this episode, I decided to do an I Ching uh, reading and I used... The imagery I like to use whenever I'm doing I Ching, which I use coins for, is from an Osho-inspired deck with awesome Osho philosophy for each card. And I think this one definitely represents a lot of what you bring to the world. It's number 22, which is grace. Let me get that close to the camera. Yes. And, and the concepts here, it's, it's fire under earth or mountain. And grace is about adornment, bringing out beauty, elegance, the outer as a reflection of the inner, vanity, charisma, and self-expression. And so it's like, it's basically like changing yourself from a dishonorable individual into one that has the cosmic and divine inspiration constantly flowing from above into one, oneself and then pouring out of oneself. That's my interpretation of of this I Ching card. But I thought it was definitely perfect for this conversation. As soon as we started talking, I was like, yeah, this was the right card. Yeah, that's, I'm embodying that experience for sure right now in my life more so than ever. Again, cleaning out my, my own body and my home and my relationships, any toxicity, any clutter, um, allow getting rid of that and letting go with grace and gratitude and sweetness. Um, but also not get, being afraid to just let things go and clear things out and uh, forgive yourself and forgive everybody and forgive, forgive, and also forget, like learn to forget. That's one of my favorite lines from Jim Morrison is learn to forget. Like he, it's, uh, it's important to, to empty ourselves so we can actually be a vessel for the merger of divine, you know, up the higher realms to pour in, 
through us and also tap into the the roots, our roots, the the uh, earth and the the lower dimensions. Which you know, again, living in Venice Beach with my community, half of my friends are homeless, and I see the hellish state of life that a lot of people are forced to uh, experience yet they rise above it and they're, they're really sweet, caring, grateful people. Um, and they have a lot to offer and I'm open to, and you know, I'm open to all communications from lower and upper. And for a lot of people, they're like, Oh, homeless people are the lowest of the low, but in many, yeah, they're low, but there's a lot of low vibe stuff they have to deal with but there's angels that walk amongst them just like maybe even more so than people are who are considered, you know, uh, pious or holy or like, you know, preachers or, you know, people that are supposed to be religious. I find actually more people are in tune with the universe that are homeless and uh, don't have anything than people that have a lot of stuff. I think it's hard for a lot of my friends who are celebrities to really kind of get off their high horse of, of, of it all and get down to like what really matters because, you know, it's a vicious, it's a vicious thing if you're caught in a, and you don't have to be a celebrity to be caught in, in the material world of drinking, which I don't drink and, uh, things that are, um, basically part of the matrix system that keeps you like even coffee. It's something that we have to get out of our system and, and clean out so you can actually be open. Coffee creates tension in your body. It creates tension in your stomach. It tightens it up. It dehydrates you. So therefore your life is going to be a little tenser and it's going to show up in weird ways, but you have to be, sensitive enough to realize these kind of subtleties in life if you really want to get to that point of being an open vessel for divine communication and he teaches me that more than anyone actually wingman they're the, dogs are the highest form of life on the planet i do, i actually just got a dog like i was showing you earlier and i think i have a greater connection than ever to the force of creation within the the god if you will which dog backwards, you know, and I've learned even in the short time about anger that's in me that I didn't even think I had reacting to the dog doing something that's just the dog doing what the dog does and immediately realizing, whoa, what's going on with you that makes you freak out like that? That's the real problem. Not that the dog did something that you didn't want it to. So, you know, it's a huge, huge self-learning experience. Never expected it to come into my life. And I just want more of them around. So I'm setting my life up to be surrounded by more nature and more animals. Yeah. And the coffee thing is another one that I've been getting sensitive enough to really see how it's keeping me stuck where I'm at. It's a very addictive drug. It's yeah. I mean, it's, I'm, I have several addictions still. I'm really barely even far into my healing process, you know, and one, one of the ones that helps more than anything for increasing sensitivity though, and letting me then, start seeing how other things were affecting me because I could feel my own inner heart again was renouncing the cult of carnism and becoming a plant fueled human in just the short two years since I've done that that's had more of an impact on opening me up emotionally than anything any therapy ever would I've never been to therapy but yeah, again what you put in your mouth you know, most important decision of your day could be what you put in your mouth. And if you're making your stomach a graveyard, you're going to be dealing with all kinds of lower vibrational shit. Yeah, it's life, eat life or eat death. I mean, it is that simple. I think you've got some awesome videos that people can check out of green recipes, too. I highly recommend checking out Greg's YouTube for the uh, the Greg the Greg Sipes Super Greens Salad, for example. <laughs> That salad's famous. I'm going to do a lot more of that. I'm about to like really dive into a whole bunch of um, making more kind of short form content for my channel, including, you know, recipes, but a lot of like scripted weird shows that um, 
uh, you know, explore a lot of what we were talking about earlier, monogamy and polygamy and health and religion and race, but in the form of entertainment, you know, and that, I feel like that's the most powerful way to shift reality again is with our art. And um, yeah, my YouTube's got some stuff, but there's, there's more to come. There's more to come for sure. If you had to give somebody the elevator pitch for why veganism is the one of the most important ways that we can actually shift and heal our our experience on this planet, how would you do that? Animals, we're, we are animals. If you want to flower beautiful things in your life, you need to eat beautiful things. And eating a slaughtered, murdered, tortured brutally cut up thing is very ugly and it's going to show up in different ways in your life. And sometimes, you know, it, it's going to be in different ways from any, in, in my own life, it showed up differently. Um, and it'll show up in everybody's life differently, but it has a, a tremendous effect on our environment. You know, the, the, the earth is suffering greatly because of the farming of animals just for uh, slaughter. Um, the animals are suffering greatly, the torture, the pain that they go through, you're then putting it in your body. It's scientific proof that it's in the cells of the meat that you would be ingesting. If you're eating it, you're eating fear, you're eating meat that has poison in it because the animals are like, a, like your dog that you love so much. They feel, they just, they want to be loved. They want fresh water. They want air clean and they, and they want to live their life. And when, you know, we take the life of, of other people, we're going to suffer one way or the other. And it's just a matter of us choosing when do we not want to suffer because we're making other people suffer. And you can get to that place and it's a process. It wasn't immediate for me and I'm still in the process of going further into my um, nonviolent, you know, experience of life to, to be more uh, helpful rather than taking from anyone for that matter, but especially taking the life of somebody, no. And there's no difference between you and a, an animal, period. Uh, you and a pig, you and a cat, you and a dog, you and a, a goat and, uh, you know, a chicken. Uh, everybody wants to live and, and everybody feels the pain. Fish feel pain and fish communicate in their own way. Everybody communicates in their own way. This is a long elevator pitch, but I could go on forever about why it's important to go towards a plant-based diet because everything will be better because of it. And I witnessed so many of my friends doing it now and they're so happy. And even if they fall, if you fall off the wagon, it's a process. I wasn't always purely a vegan and it took, it took years and years for my body to get rid of the, sh the, the garbage inside of our body that craves meat because there's actually parasites and worms and fungus in our stomach that want the the dead flesh because it feeds the colonies inside of your intestinal tract, which then there feeds all the way up into, uh, there's like worms and parasites and fungus that go into your cerebral cortex of your brain and crave it to feed it itself. And it's, it's disgusting, but you have to constantly battle that um, stuff inside your stomach. But the first thing you can do is stop feeding it uh, meat. And then, you know, start getting into a more raw superfood kind of diet and you'll feel better and better and better. And you can actually heal yourself from any ailment you might have from whatever the disease is, whether it's, you know, just acne will go away, you know, getting rid of d dairy is also meat. Dairy is liquid meat. Um, there's, there's really no dairy on the market that isn't full of uh, death and the same, you know, torture. And suffering and slavery. Yeah. And they push that on society because the, the powers that be who own the oil industry also own the milk industry and the dairy industry. And they benefit by having you sick and having you uh, foggy in the brain and full of mucus and, um, you know, controlled. And it's, uh, it's good to not give them your money. It's good to not give the same people who are, you know, destroying the earth from so many aspects, your money, you know? And I think that's really how we can make the biggest difference in our lives right now is, stop killing yeah and what we put money towards is the same way as like voting for that thing to exist in the world for example and 
with aller like you said, filled with mucus, I completely cured lifetime horrendous allergies by getting dairy out of my diet. Yeah, allergies cured. will go away. Um, mine did when I got rid of dairy. Allergies went, completely went away. Um, acne, I wish I would have known as a boy. <laughs> I was addicted to cheese and, you know, it's come up because of, mostly it's because of cheese. 99.9% of it is the is pus coming out of your body. The, the pus is coming out, being pushed out of your body from your stomach, from the, the goo, the glue, the, the, the mucus of these animals being pushed out of your body. That's what acne is. But what they want to do is feed you Accutane and sell you products to, uh, you know, combat the acne that they're actually selling you through the dairy, the same companies on the dairy companies on the pharmaceutical companies. Yeah. The, the negative unity of the controller minded people is something that we have to match with a unity of ourselves, but not necessarily any one group or movement of positive light working people, but a true internal self unity where each of us are individually whole and no longer you know, ritually murdering ourselves by murdering something outside of ourselves. Even plants, it's different when it, I think there's a difference when it comes to what you're eating with plants. And I can, you know, energetically, yes, those things do have a form of consciousness, but, uh, and th it's possible to take food from plants without killing them. I think it's even possible that we might be needing to eventually shift away from like as we evolve further down the line as a species shift away from even uh killing plants to harvest them but you know we have to do these things incrementally one step at a time if it starts with you out there listening trying to go meat free for a while or trying to go dairy free for a while just one of these things that's a great place to start it's about being on the path and make making the steps towards the changes not just ignoring what you know needs to be changed and when it comes to the whole craving issue you can really do some fascinating research about how our gut biome and that bacteria and those colonies actually influence our thoughts and our moods and behaviors and are literally like mind control parasites inside of us including what foods we want to eat and just with a simple cleansing regimen you can look up these type of protocols online inexpensively. You can clear out your colon and your gut for, of 90% of that crap. And then the craving might be like, you know, level one instead of level 100. And it's going to be a lot easier to keep your positive changes up. It's like for me, it's not even a question anymore. It's not like a smoker who quit smoking and they always kind of want a cigarette. It's like, I'm totally disgusted by the entire practice a hundred percent, you know? Yes. Yeah, cigarettes. And car sounds are like my two least favorite things in the whole world. And leaf blowers. Leaf blowers, cigarettes, and trucks and car sound. I fucking hate them. And, uh, <laughs> and cell phone vibration sound. The car, one, the car, one, the car one's probably going to be around a lot longer than the other two because leaf blowers are already illegal in a lot of cities. They're just not enforced yet. Um, and cigarettes hopefully will people will wake up and not continue to kill themselves and destroy our environment. I mean, it's just another perfect example of like what's going on inside is going on outside. Look, the majority of people are just killing themselves with their food and therefore we're killing our world. We're killing earth. Yeah. When you see things as through the unified perspective, it's, it's really clear why everything is happening why we have less freedom is because we're afraid of the responsibility that comes with freedom we're afraid to actually have to do the right thing all the time instead of someone else telling us what the right thing is and, and that's really what it's going to take to make the changes that's something i've been feeling for quite some time but you know one thing that might actually help us make changes in this world would be if you actually got superhero powers what would you do if you did get superhero powers well, I feel like we actually, I do have superhero powers because I have the ability to co-create co with reality and that's a superpower. And it starts with you knowing what you want and then taking the steps to manifest in your life what you're wanting, which uh, means opening up and clearing out your body, mind and your spirit. So there's clarity and there's a nice fertile, place for things to grow that you're wanting. That's why I cut my hair. I wanted to start fresh 
a new a new energy to allow new things to grow in my life that's a superpower in itself but there's also like kundalini yoga if you wanted to go further with it kundalini yoga is basically a superhero yoga practice where uh, you learning how to master this body and the superpowers that are hidden within it that we should be taught that's the stuff we should be taught in school is how to utilize this body which is full of superpowers that we were being pro we've, we've been programmed not to use and to almost feel guilty of but kundalini yoga will help you awaken all of those things if you uh, want to start doing you know yoga i would suggest kundalini yoga anyone could do it you could do it in your living room you could do it sitting you don't need you could be in a wheelchair and do it but if the more you dive into kundalini yoga the more you're going to find there's a lot of um very simple yogic techniques from kundalini yoga um the science of kundalini yoga that'll teach you how to become a real life superhero yeah i uh personally have found practices like qigong and tai chi to have a similar influence like and i had a great discussion with a previous guest a few episodes back where we came we, we came to talk a lot about the whole notion that if you can't if you can't feel your internal energy, all you have to do is imagine it while you're in the practice. If you've ever tried something like Qigong or Tai Chi or Kundalini and you didn't quote unquote feel anything or you, d you didn't understand what was being asked of you whenever you are meant to focus your energy on different parts of your body, the, the thing that you're meant to exercise there is your imagination because it's not something that your mind is doing to conjure up an illusion imagination is a sensory organ it's part of how we co-create with reality and the more you develop that the more you have that particular superpower both with some th the things you do artistically and with what you can make your body do and you can get it back it's basically raped from us as kids our imagination our our wonderment like think of this like a little baby freshly born is sitting in, in its crib and a bird comes in and you're enamored by this bird like wow this amazing creature is in here and you're so excited as a baby but then your mom comes in and she's like oh it's just a, it's a bird it's just a bird and then eventually it's just a bird and you're not like you're not like wow and and it's it's these it's the labeling of things and the separation that uh we need to get rid of and realize it is very much all a miracle and magical and super powers and super, you know, heroes are real, and you are the real superheroes, not Spider Man and all this crap. Which I know I get to play a lot of superheroes on cartoons and stuff, which is a blessing because it gives me, you know, a, a fun job to play in, uh, you know, a realm to play in, and it feeds Wingman. But I, I'm not a big fan of superheroes, really. I don't, I don't like superhero movies. Um, which is cool because the new Teen Titans go to the movies <laughs> movie that comes out July 29th is all about ending superhero movies. Uh, <laughs> it should be the, yeah, it's, it's all about ending superhero movies. The reason why I don't like them is because it's just like, it's just robbing from you what you already have, like in idolizing some kind of, you know, thing that's never achievable, you know, like a fucking guy with a cape who flies around. It's just so stupid. And people are like, oh, wow, that's amazing. No, it's not. It's, it's like not amazing. What's amazing is the healing powers and the superpowers that you contain with inside of yourself that are just sitting dormant because you're, you'd rather watch, you know, some guy fly around with a cape rather than you kind of getting into the fact that you have the real ability to be a healer and, uh, and have real superpowers to do whatever you want. But, you, you know, we're robbed of that by, it's kind of like the Jesus complex. It's like everybody's looking for a savior. And you're the only savior that can save you. There's nobody else. And those people aren't real. It's all made up. Even Jesus. Do you really know if Jesus was real? No, nobody does. So how are you going to believe in that? Like, the only thing you can believe really know is what's in front of our faces right now. And we're in a time and a place where we need to open up our eyes and look what's going on really right now. Not from 5,000 years ago or some made up character on TV about you know, who's supposed to be the savior of our world and he keeps saving the world, whether it's Black Panther or Superman, whoever the whoever it is, forget all that. It's time for you to be the superhero. And 
that's really you really will you wh where you're going to get the great joy that you're seeking um you know from watching or even putting your uh faith into some kind of um, imaginary character so i only have a couple more minutes left if you wanted to ask me anything oh sure um well, you know, I kind of liked where we were going, talking about superheroes for a little bit there. The fact that they're getting kind of darker and darker as the movies go on, too. And that's not a joke about the fact that one of the newer ones is Black Panther. It just means the, the characters, the heroes were, were being made to or people are being made to think that heroes have to do, you know, bad things sometimes to do the right thing or that, you know, that violence is a way to solve problems and uh, so again, violence, man. Yeah, and, and ca cartoons can do things differently with superheroes, and I appreciate them for that reason. My favorite one as a kid was the 90s Spider-Man cartoon, where if you go back and watch it, he never even throws a single punch. He just subdues bad guys. And I think that's kind of what we're meant to do. We're not meant to kill the darkness within ourselves. We're just meant to um, stop it from hurting us anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just feel like... You know, um, it's time to tune in, right? What was that saying that uh, Timothy Leary would say? Tune, tune in, turn on, and drop out. Yes, that's what we need, but not in the way that the sort of movement ended up taking it up. Because we well, don't. Well, I'm not saying you need L not you don't need LSD. I'm talking about tune into yourself. You know, turn on yourself. And then drop out of this rat race system that's destroying planet Earth. But it starts with you. You have to do this for yourself. And maybe this is the last interview I'll do. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, thanks for but even I'm, giving I, me the, really, the time. I know it's hard to sit still in front of a screen for that long. I, um, I'll even let you go. I want to hear what you've got to, uh, to say to everybody before we're done here, though. Well... I would say, become your breath. Because you already are it. So, you know, if you really want to find peace, really just become your breath. And then all thoughts disappear and you're just present to the divine that's all around you. But we forget, even I forget all the time that I'm even breathing. And that's really what keeps us here. And that's essentially who we are is our breath. And we don't, we forget. And then you're forgetting what really life is about. And then you're not seeing what life really is. So be become your breath, master your breath, remember your breath, because that's really who you are. And when you start breathing consciously, the past disappears, the future disappears, and you're just here now. And that's really where we can be with each other and create solutions that are needed right now. And um, thanks for spending time with me and listening and, and uh, having me on your show, dude. I really appreciate you making an appearance on this humble program and expressing yourself so honestly. And I hope you have a beautiful rest of your time and really wish you luck with getting rid of the phone because if you figure out how to do that, I'm going to be trying to follow suit for sure. I'm doing it. Peace, love, and animals, brother. Booyah kasha. Booyah kasha. Thanks again. Yeah, you got it. Holy mother goddess of goodness, folks. Was that an incredible episode or what? I had such a powerfully positive feeling going in the weeks leading up to my chat with Greg, and although I wasn't attached to any particular outcome or conversation topic, he really blew my mind with the level of consciousness that he vibes at consistently. It's one thing for a celebrity to come across in their media appearances as totally spiritual, man. But it's a totally different thing to freely flow in the feeling of unity and express it with impeccable credulity like my new heroes, the Sipes and Wingman G. Although it is sad that Greg didn't have the time to stick around for our usual plus extension, I feel that we can agree that the man deserves his free time and probably uses it to save stray dogs and give children organic broccoli. I was so pleased with the unity consciousness perspectives that Sipes shared this episode that I think it probably has as many gems as a three-hour podcast typically achieves. So once again, I must say eternal gratitude to Greg for taking the time to come on Interverse. And while I'm thanking you awesome people, thanking awesome people, 
A big virtual hug through cyber psychic space is in order to you for checking out my podcast and sticking it out to the end of the episode. I imagine we have some newcomers checking out IP for the first time thanks to Greg's fan base. And if that's you, why not make you why not make sure and subscribe on iTunes or YouTube or wherever you like to get your audio shows? If you enjoyed my chat with Greg, there are probably tons of shows in the IP back catalog that you'll love as much or more. And if you're really down to dive deep within the mind hole that we call Interverse, you can subscribe to our Plus membership through Patreon and get double the episode length on most podcasts. This one excluded, unfortunately, but that's far from the only perk. And some others might include, some others do include access to episodes, discounts on the IP store, which now has t shirts, I might add. And patrons also get exclusive access to monthly online hangouts with me and the rest of the subscriber tribe. So if this show is your type of thing and you want to help me grow and evolve it into something greater, check the episode notes for a link or go to patreon.com forward slash interverse and we can enjoy a beautiful relationship of reciprocating energy and good intentions for one another. It's only $5 a month for plus, which usually shakes out to about $1 per episode when I've got a good flow going of creation per month and uh, that's easier and easier the more of you who subscribe but it's also going to be easier to consistently get great guests for each weekly show thanks to the fact that my insanely creative and super kind friend Chris is going to help start organizing my schedule for me and a few other things on the back end that I struggle to keep going while I'm dedicating the time it takes to actually make these episodes add to the fact that add that to the fact that I've finally managed to upgrade my computer to something incredible compared to what I had before, like a God computer. <laughs> and that's a lot thanks to you subscribers and the, the help you've sent me. And also thanks to just sort of the winds of fortune finally blowing in my personal life in, in a different direction. Uh, so you've now got a formula for some really epic content coming this year and beyond. I had such an easier time editing this episode. It's so much quicker than anyone before it because of this new computer. I feel like I'm always perpetually at the beginning of this podcasting journey. And now that it's springtime too, things really do feel fresh and new. Like there's a great beginning starting. And I hope a lot of you come on on this journey with me into the the year because we're going to have some super good stuff. I I don't even know what's going to happen yet, but I know that it's the kind of chaos that we like, the positive and Support from listeners, you you guys, it comes in so many more forms than just making a voluntary donation on Patreon. The messages I get from my friends who are checking out the show and the great new people I've met through doing it and seeing you guys all fighting like crazy to bring harmony and beauty into your worlds, well, honestly makes me a little bit emotional to think about it, but in a good way. So if you just can't bring yourself to pay for your infotainment or you already have too many subscriptions like Netflix or something and you want to really make my day and help out the show in a tangible way that's free, you can always drop a five-star review through the iTunes podcast app. That helps new seekers find the show, and when I see that you guys write something there, it really supercharges me to express the highest version of myself possible, so that this podcast can be a positive part of someone's life. There are a few new reviews since the last episode that I want to read, and I'll be doing this at the end of episodes from now on. If we can keep the ball rolling anyway and get more of you to leave some stars. And you know, if you've ever played Mario, it seems obvious why I need to get as many stars from you guys in the form of reviews as I can because it takes a shitload of stars to get to Rainbow Road. (laughs) Okay, I digress, but these reviews are super rad and super helpful. First there was the user Blake to the Moon, and I'm quite sure I know which Blake this is, and she's one of the nicest, most animal lovingest people on earth. This review was actually from back in May, but I wanted to read it anyway. Don't miss this show. I've just started my journey on this show and each one has its own message. Chance to keep doing what you're doing, making the world a better place and more informed. Truly insightful. Dragon emoji, crystal ball emoji, wind emoji, sunflower emoji, hearts emoji. I felt the emojis were important to really convey the meaning of that review. I mean, A lot of people say that emojis are proof that our language is declining, but maybe it's like we're evolving to hieroglyphic language and we're becoming more advanced like Egyptians or something. Hey, who knows? But thank you, Blake. Thanks for the review. I really do appreciate it. I hope we talk soon. And uh, next is from Soulbro3, whose identity is a mystery to me. And he says, refreshing. 
man, this podcast is so motivating and inspiring. It's like a healthy dose of sleep. It gets you focused. Amazing podcast. So those are pretty kind words, but I would recommend a daily meditation habit for making you feel more restful and, re- and focused over listening to this podcast. But if the show actually gets you interested in meditation, then I guess that's pretty good. So that's it for the reviews. But remember, you can go drop one at iTunes through the podcasting app, and it would make me super happy for until I forgot and got distracted by something else and forgot that you left it there. But then I'll see it again later the next time I check and I'll be like, oh, happy again. So it's like it's perpetual happiness that you're granting me through the review. And also you help other people find the show. Well, guys, that is it for this episode. But plus subscribers should watch out for a very likely bonus episode where instead of having a plus extension with Greg, my friend Chris and I may have a chat about what he's up to creating with Sipes and his own personal pursuits, as well as some of our plans and ideas for where to take Interverse. I'm sure we'll follow up on a lot of things that Greg brought to the table in this episode as well. So if you're on Plus, I'll talk to you later this week. Everyone else, it won't be too much longer. Lots of great interviews are lined up in the next few weeks, and I really can't wait to share them with y'all. So thanks for listening. And like Greg so eloquently said at the end there, remember to be your breath. Wow. That's a hard thing to do when you're motor mouthing into a microphone like me. I better get out of here. I love y'all. Chance, signing off. I know.